Well, hello, folks. Top Gun here with you, and I got a good one for you today, and a serious one. We're going to talk about the markets. We're going to talk about my charts. Don't worry, we'll get to that. But I'm going to start with news. I'm basically going to break out news and then talk charts in a little more in depth. I'm going to emulate another favorite YouTuber of mine that's been missing. I hope he's okay. This shout out goes to the Maverick of Wall Street. It's helped me understand my charts a lot. Um, the geopolitical atmosphere, you know, economic position of the world. Uh, so I really feel a lot better with what I'm doing. and I miss his videos, but surprisingly, his whole goal, like mine, is to educate people, to get them to actually be able to think for themselves. And funny enough, since he's gone missing, I was afraid I'd lose my pulse on the world. And I'm like, wait a minute, I know what to look up. I know what to search for. I know what's coming next. And like, he's been doing his job. So although sometimes I get crushed with this bear market and I'm crushed at work building a deck that lasts and lasts. It was supposed to take two weeks and it's been six. So, you know, I, uh, I get carried away from this, but seeing the fact that, yeah, he has been teaching me. It's working. You know, I got to keep up doing what I'm doing because it's probably working for some of you too. There are some of you that are so consistent and still come keep checking my videos. He even asked me to make more. Touches my heart. So here I am to make more. Now, we're going to start off by talking about some Pulse news. Pulse Con. What happened there? All right. We're going to have to talk about this seriously for a moment. So I think the aviators are going to have to come off me to talk seriously to you I would like to also point out never take life too seriously you'll never make it out alive now PulseCon was an event that I was even looking forward to a little bit because I've been trying to get my passport thinking about actually oh you know what maybe I'll just drive down there and visit for a day or something I can't afford a ticket because you know I took, didn't want to lose the opportunity cost I got in on Pulse Chain and Pulse Chain products, I'm, I'm happy. So, yeah, um, PulseCon, there has been some developments. Now, the community um, had some debate about how to handle this, and it's still in flux a little bit. So, rather than go any emotional, we'll stick to the facts, and let's be honest about it. So, no community is completely safe from mistakes or being taken advantage of. The more perfect and pure community is, the better it is at supporting, the more trust is found. The more trust there is, the easier it can be taken advantage of. These are little logical steps. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you have anything to add in the comments while you're liking and subscribing, I mean, I don't really care, but I'm guessing this information should get out there. You guys tune in, so hit it. And check me out on Twitter. I'm on there all the time. I'm finally a twit. Yay! Uh, you know, I, I finally caved, and I'm on there. That's where a lot of stuff is going down. So um, I do my price calls and a lot of other stuff on there. But I digress. Pulse Con is what you guys want to know about. So the guy that set up uh, Pulse Con took on the event, had grand aspirations, rented out some expensive venues, put down the deposits, went into ticket sales, sold about 350 tickets. The prices ranged from, I don't know, as low as 650, but up to 2000, the average sale price about 1500. I'll have to go through some math later. But what this means at an average sale price um, of even $1,000, that's at least $350,000 gathered. Math makes sense there. And half of 350,000 is 106, or 175,000. So you can add that to it. That's four, or sorry, 525,000. So that's a, that's, that could be a good chunk of ticket sales. The most minimum could be if they were all 650 is 227,000. So, I mean, money was raised there. Money was raised from vendors. It was collected. But the plans are so extravagant that the fact remains that they did come on to Twitter and basically, hat in hand, 
asked for another $350,000 from the community to make sure the event goes through as planned with very little deadline notice as the event is very close. Uh, the deadlines for some things are coming up. So yeah, very last minute and the community may not be able to pull together that money. Um, there may not even be a incentive to pull together that money as a lot of the community didn't agree with how outlandish the event was. Most of the community likes simple and practical meet or at a golf course or meet up at heck an IHOP would probably be okay um, rather than you know meeting at the Grand Plaza in Vegas where Boku cash where okay only rich people can kind of come attend that your average crypto person maybe like myself that can only put in 50 to 100 dollars at a time can't turn around and go oh yeah I'll drop two grand on a ticket to go hang out with some crypto people which is probably going to be a collection of a whole bunch of scam places with booths some of them will be gold but most of them like scam convention i mean no i love crypto i'm in crypto and i have to keep sorting through it to find the gems and there are gems so yeah um with that the community basically discussed kept their emotions pretty well in check considering and are going to come together, it seems, potluck style. So because there's already events going on at a nightclub and at a golf course, they're going to cut out some of their space, some of their room that they've rented and help distribute it. So the people that have spent money on the tickets that probably will not be getting much of a refund um, will still, although they're not going to get exactly what they paid for, because the community cares, they're going to come together and still get something for their ticket be able to go talk to people in the community to still participate in some events to get some food together like this is amazing that the community basically goes yeah you know what this guy he screwed up so we're going to make up for it because we still want you to have a pleasant experience because we still believe in what we're doing wow wow even in the little bear market just wow love this community love being part of the hex community and yes i've got my bearish opinions that there are better times to be buying than absolutely right now but in the grand scam of uh, grand scheme of dca you know anything can happen and uh not buying sometimes can be a mistake it all depends on your strategy i can't tell you what to do i can only tell you what i'm doing and as somebody who is very, very poor and can't even irk out the money every month to DCA in, it, it does make it feel like every dollar matters just that much more. And since I've been pretty good at time in the bottoms with my TA so far, I'm happier saving and buying when I think a particular bottom is in. Now, whether it's the final bottom, that doesn't matter because it's the DCA strategy. But uh, recently, there was a bit of a mania, as far as I was concerned, and uh, the trading went out of, out the window, so oh, I will come back and talk to that, but yeah. So PulseCon, I am very, very pleased with the, uh, with the community support, um, how many people have piled in, and how many people are still going to be giving a hand to help, and I even offered my Excel services. If I can go through some numbers and help carve out a little extra cash or figure out some way to maximize spending, I will. I mean, that's uh, I, I took business accounting. So, well, business and majored in accounting. That would be the just lazy in Canada here. We, we don't care so much about our, our education. It's like, yeah, we got it. We can do it. We, we don't boast we went to Princeton or Harvard. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I, like the community. It's amazing how much they're coming together. And so I even jumped on the bandwagon anywhere I can help. I love this community. I really do. And I know I sacrificed a lot of viewers from Hexicans because I'm not a maxi. Yes, I believe in Hex. It is way better than Bitcoin. It is a better version of Bitcoin. It will do better on the long haul. There is even a brand new blockchain network to replace Ethereum 
to support it so that it can thrive and do well. Like, that is just amazing, the amount of work that has gone in around this project. And some people aren't even aware of Maxi and Hedron and Icosa. Like, Alex has done the Hedron Icosa thing, which is a balancing token system that works with Hex to kind of make arbitrage opportunities and lending and create NFT stakes, which is amazing. NFTs with utility. The, th the thing that actually makes it interesting. Well, what is that important? Well, if you look at the traditional market, they're called bonds. You buy them and they pay yield. You can trade them. You can't trade a hex stake traditionally until Alex Whitaker came along, if I'm saying his name right, and did a whole bunch of programming that's actually pretty cool. Now, the token supply in Hedron I thought was excessive, the amount it can rain down and... I see a lot of mass numbers that have a lot of variables that I haven't been able to put into my kind of systemic. Let's do a forecast, modeling of math. Um, there's just too much going on to do that. I mean, I can look at certain elements of it, and it's cool. Uh, but it is a Rube Ginberg machine. <laughs> so some people will appreciate it, but I've not never been confident on how much it'll pick on how like pick up how much spending will really come into the system um it complements hex so it's cool i've never been hugely bullish on it i bought a little on a dip and there's another dip coming in and if you guys are interested in picking up just a little like i did um but uh yeah uh there are really cool projects so let's get on and look at the market chart show. or no you know let's talk some more news there's so much going on like right now i've tweeted about china finally demolishing its great pyramids um china's great pyramids being empty apartment towers with no plumbing no electricity and no stairwells or elevators very livable very awesome you can sell them very quickly not the whole market system in china for around property overinflated and bubbled and some people didn't even know what I'm talking about. Like, I remember when I had KG on for my first show, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, getting into crypto because the housing market's about to collapse. So what? What are you talking about? It's doing fine. I'm like, oh, okay. That's the housing market. It started to come down. And in some ways, I'm like, oh, like Michael Burry, I'm just a little early. You know, like when you start to see these grand things, it's just, oh, a ticking clock. All right. A little too early. I got stay calm i do like to still get riled up around this stuff i find it exciting and captivating so yeah china is not doing the greatest economically so although china and russia and several other countries are trying to do the bricks dollar and they're buying up a bunch of gold to compete for the world currency which is gonna affect uh world markets and the u.s dollar it's not as threatening as it should be now china has factory infrastructure which is awesome um russia is resource rich which is awesome they can try and work together but the economies themselves are not in great shape they are already overextended empires just like the united states so economically they're 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 pulling a hail mary and that isn't the biggest baseline on the problems right now the biggest baseline comes down to the inflation and during election season what the government is doing to make it worse all right the info inf <laughs> the inflation reduction act can you imagine for a moment inflation as a pressurized two liter bottle of coca-cola brand new and cold from the store ready to drink and just fizz out and fry everything as you just trying okay um now the inflation reduction act imagine that as two mentos in your hand drop it in inflation is always always a monetary phenomenon and spending more money does not make inflation better it makes it worse subsidizing all of these things and spending into it to keep the money flowing when it needs to settle out when demand needs to be crushed it makes the fed's job harder so as jerome powell's raising interest rates really too slow the volcker approach all at once shock and awe of the market get that scare get that dip bring the inflation down so until they actually get inflation under control they can't start lowering rates 
the mortgage market can't kick back on. Variable rates and defaults are climbing. They're slow at this rate, but they're climbing because it's not as fraudulent the way they lent it out. They, they did the market a lot better this time, making sure your credit scores were high as heck. But it doesn't matter if you have an 1100 or a 1400 credit score, some imaginary number, a 10,000 credit score. If you lose your job and you all of a sudden are already racked up on debt and have no way to pay your credit in about three months, your credit score is crap and you're in collections. 90 day delinquencies. If you can't find a new job, if the spending's not going on, if it's actually a recession, go ahead, change the definition of a recession on Google and Wikipedia. Go for it. Everyone still knows. A recession is a recession, economic downturn. So the inflation monster is out of control. And the stock market thrives when quantitative easing is happening from the Fed like it has pretty much since 2009. The Fed has been boom, 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 spending, 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 and went nuts during the recent thing where we all had to stay in our houses. This means there is way too much money and liquidity in the system. So this bull run was, wow, manic. It pumped up past my expectations. And it can't really come down when they're signing the Inflation Reduction Act. That's not going to help. So even if right now we're going to see these probably CPI readings coming out that may indicate even some lower inflation because they only monitor, they don't monitor food or rent, you know, nothing you need to live like air. The CPI, you know, it's only about necessities, not food and rent. The things that you're definitely buying so yeah the cp line the cook data will probably come out a little lower because it does include gasoline energy prices at least so as we see a dip in gasoline yeah it's going to balance out while the other things are still skyrocketing because oh hey the uk has not secured any gasoline for the winter basically they or EU, sorry, the EU, the whole of Europe, is pretty crapped on for gasoline because the states is like, yeah, don't worry, we'll back you. And then, oh, we can't back you. We don't have enough. So they're resorting to firewood. It's going to get bad. The demand for oil is going to spike again, which is going to drive up inflation even more. There are now external forces beyond the monetary system that aren't if inflation is there, it's just basically speeding up us noticing it, where it would have taken longer for this rate to play out and the money to drain these forces like the Inflation Reduction Act and sanctions against Russian oil to fire up inflation even further. So it just amazes me constantly the amount of faith people put in their local bank or their local government when for a long time it has been pretty apparent that unless you have lots of money to donate to their campaign, they don't really care what's happening to you. The system is not built for the average day person. The middle class is disappearing. 87,000 IRS agents being hired. And Janet Yellen, Oh, don't go after the middle class, okay? And then the IRS job posting must be willing to use deadly force. Oh, wait, oops, we uh, we pulled that. Forget we said that. And then it's become quite clear from some whistleblowers yelling out, uh, yeah, they're gearing up to exactly to come after the middle class. Like, oh, yes, no, they're not coming after the middle class. Do not pay attention to my left hand as my right hand robs you. Oh, my God, the stuff that just goes down in the world economic form. Um, in the it's just it is quite an interesting ride out there and with all that negativity there is still positivity because this is where an asset price correction has to happen and a lot of people sold out at the top back in December waiting for an actual bottom and it hasn't come back in we've had some trading and some mania so let's have a look so let's look at the SPX well, the NASDAQ was my first cue. It seems like the leader. And it broke 
out of this long-standing downtrend. We go to the weeks. Yeah, we caved out. We had a breakout. We might slide down the top of this. We'll see how quickly the sell pressure comes back. Because the rally really overextended. Some people, the bears will argue, well, it's just a pullback. We'll launch back off. So I was looking at the SPX. All right, let's see when it pulls back. It's pulling back within the bear trend. Where did this all come from? Looking at Apple. The CHIP Act, the inflation, yeah, the CHIP bill too. Oh, it had a mini WIC breakout for the week, basically. Let's look at the day. Oh, yeah, WIC breakout across the days. What's this yellow line? Well, on Twitter... That's basically where I called out, all right, I'm shorting with expectations. It could still pop as high as 180 over the next two weeks before she starts coming down. And where did she pop up to? 176, almost impressive. So the mania in Apple had traded up. And where's this money coming from? People are racking up their credit cards. They're going poor. It's not the retail investor. There was a bit of a financial mania because every time the market is bottomed going off of certain TAs, yeah, this is exactly when the next bull run cycle has happened. But every time the bull run cycle has happened, the Fed intervened by immediately cutting rates and printing more money. They did not do that this time which is why this is not the bull run, but yet another fake rally, bull rally, uh, bull trap. What I've been calling out, going to get caught. The fundamentals are still bad. No changing fundamentals making the world better for financial investment have happened. There's no new miracle inventions. There's no... Nothing that's just spontaneously like, oh, we found new mineral deposits and, and more gold or more oil, more resources. No, there's no huge all of a sudden benefit sparking economic conditions. They're tightening, they're hurting, and the Fed has to act properly to get it under control. Right now, up here at the top, we almost hope that we would ride in this area up here. Oh, I accidentally clicked the line, but... That we stay, you know, within this upper range area till September 15th or 12th or 13th. Whenever the Fed meeting is, I got to recheck those dates because I'm still learning that kind of stuff. But when the Fed meeting happens, they'll have more room to do the Volcker approach and stop mucking about with 25, 50, 75 basis points and start an actual full percent or more bring out the guns, bring out the bazooka while there's a cushion in the market. This is the time where you're least likely to cause the D word. And since Jamie Dimon, the gangster of JP Morgan, is too afraid to say the D word, I'm going to follow his lead. Something worse than a recession could be on its way. I mean, I've seen the video for a private journal release. It's on Stoic Finance. Check that out if you want to see it, uh, where Jamie Dimon does his private investor meeting and basically warns of the economic hurricane coming. There are some bad times coming to the market, and even though inflation is wrecking the dollar, there needs to be some heavy asset corrections. Now, I don't know if the dollar or bonds are actually the best place to keep or gold, where you want to hide out while the asset prices come back down. But with all this woe and glow, as long as you're loaded up with some dry powder, you kept your job, you did some savings like I'm trying to do, be prepared to go some time without work and still have money to live on and to have some money set aside to buy things Warren Buffett style. What I'm going to do is wait where I always can sense the bottoms and as the bottoms come, I will continue to DCA in small amounts until I am concerned, really, really convinced that we are at the bottom bottom. And when we hit that, I'll offload every bit of dry powder I have and start scooping up the best assets that I still feel have the best valuations that have done well as the recession has kicked in and have the best chance of leading a bull run out of the next cycle. 
I mean, I don't want to day trade. Definitely. That is just obnoxious. Like, I watch the stuff, and I have gotten R8 at calling some of the movements. But if I don't see the mania, or I don't see some aspect, ah, uh, I'm wrong. And so, still, 1 out of 10. Now, I don't like gambling. I like more certainties. And I know when those bottoms hit, it's great opportunity to DCA. And I have a feeling I'll know the bottom when I see it. And I don't know how to exactly describe it, but it's like just a way of seeing the pattern. So I mark out my lines. I watch it move through its trends and channels. And you guys have seen these charts for a while and seen, oh, yeah, he's marked these lines out. Oh, yeah, he did a video where he built, uh, was it the Tesla chart or the Apple chart? I'm like, you know what? I should build one for this. I still didn't even expect Tesla to get this high. That's impressive. You know, like... The bull run really went because more needs to come out. So it's perfect timing for the Fed. We have a pullback coming into Monday here. There, there's no FOMC minutes. Like all the important dates are in September. There's not, I don't know if we have earnings coming out. I don't know. I have to do some checking and see there's financial news that affects the markets. Will affect gold, will affect oil, and will affect Apple, risk on assets. This affects crypto. We see these patterns reproduce themselves over in crypto. Because we're looking at this chart right here. Okay. Well, let's have a look at this chart right here. Bitcoin. Now, it's not exactly the same anymore. Ethereum. The correlation kind of jumped out. We had it all during the slide down. And then they traded up differently a little bit. But they're going to shake out the same again when that comes down. So I'll be redoing my TA to figure out where I think these bottoms are. But I have talked a little bit about long term. So let's look at the dollar. If the dollar can continue to pop higher, which it will as the market actually crashes and the Fed raises interest rates, it has a lot of room to move higher. And as you can see, I marked out two bull trends. There is the original bull trend and then we kicked off even higher. This happens. And as the Fed raises hate rates, this could happen even higher. As the dollar kicks up, assets will come down. All right, but we've got, we're fighting basically oil. You can see a rounding effect starting to happen around my down channel. And I've had to extend it because my original down channel, oops, grab the wrong line, help me. My wrong, there we go, my wrong channel, it had what we call a breakout wick here. Once it had the breakout wick, it went from stiff resistance to soft, which means I had a funny feeling the next time it tested, it would also get over and start riding the downside of it. It did. Fell under, and it basically, to me, said, no, we have extended the trend. Move it. Oh, okay, it still has points of care correlation. This is where the trend is right now, but it's pushing up. That's a rounding and bottoming, indicating the direction that oil is going to have a rebound which is going to track inflation screaming out of control and the Fed has to act and the markets will panic and sell. And this will extend over to Bitcoin. Do you see the pattern of dominoes falling? You can watch this stuff to see what's going to happen next because as it's predicting this, it's if the dominoes do these things that they should. But there's room for these dominoes to change their mind and do something slightly different. And if they do, a slightly different set of dominoes launches. It's all right. It's all dominoes. One way or another, they fall. And if you can follow them, you can see where they lead or their possible outcomes. So you can prepare for those outcomes by being well-versed. Now, we look at Bitcoin on this macro. Here, let's look at the weeks. Okay? We can see... The rally in the weeks and the rally in the weeks is running out of steam and it doesn't even get as high as we did breaking out for our double top. Basically, this was the top and this is insanity mania. This rally should have never gone this high. It really did some funny things, which is cool. Should have never, but it does. Like that's where, I don't know, I'm getting into it. Maybe I would have been able to see that coming if I uh, was watching the bull run but i've been watching the bear run so i've been learning a lot about bear markets 
end, you can see this long standing trend so far has not been broken. It's a support line, so we shouldn't go down faster than that, but it's pointing down. And this resistance, we haven't broken out of that, so we're likely to go down with that. Now, what's this time horizon? This right here is New Year's of 2023. I can't seem to land my mouse on it. January 2nd, fine. You get it, the end of the year. So we're looking at just a little over three months is that gap from the current candle to the dotted line. So you can see how this downtrend points right down into this red zone before the end of the year. Now, what are the chances that inflation will actually come down and the Fed will be able to turn and go to quantitative easing and cause the next bull run? Well, for that, we... <laughs> We need to look at what inflation is doing and zero inflation because they didn't mark rent and food that, oh, because gasoline came down while other things were still going up, inflation stalled for a month and maintained at the same level or came down just slightly. This is not massively bullish. Look back to the 70s and 80s. So at the end of the 70s, Volcker having mad inflation to deal with, I believe in the beginning of 81, did his massive drop of inflation rate crushing. And what happened? Inflation came right down. So what was the Fed able to do? Drop rates. What happened immediately after they dropped rates? Inflation came back like a herpes flare-up because it wasn't really gone. They shocked it out of the system for a moment, but all that liquidity had been drained up. So the economy started booming again, inflation started taking off, and they had to do it a second time. A little over a year later, I think in 1982, dropped that massive 4 or 5% rate right, all at once. 400, 500 basis points all at once. Bam. And then inflation went away for good. Now, the Fed here has been slowly irking, and they're not even at 2.5%. I think we're just barely there, and the inflation's way above. When they did that 500 basis point, it was above the inflation rate to shock it down. So theoretically, the Fed needs to actually come above to really shock it down, which doesn't necessarily even kill it in the first place. So think of inflation like a bacterial infection, like the clap, all right? And you got to take your medicine, your antibiotics. And please tell me you know what happens if you don't take your full prescription and properly finish it. That's right. You get bacteria resistant, or sorry, antibiotic resistant bacteria that's even harder to fight. This is my point. The Fed needs to pull this stuff up or you're going to get stagflation and a recession, which will lead to the D word I shall not say. And then we see some really scary stuff. So this red line, this blue line would be the traditional 85, well, between the red and blue line would be your traditional 85, right about here, 85%. So 80 to almost 90%, you know, correction, would normally stop before the red line. This would be our normal bottom in a normal cycle. We always see about 85% corrections down. There's been four of them. <laughs> Bitcoin's pretty consistent with that. So this little gap here would be the range if the Fed was continuing to print money. If the speculation of risk on assets could trade as normally. But with the Fed doing what it's doing and so many leveraged positions to buy Bitcoin, the market has got still some bubbles in it. Too much leveraging always happens when asset prices are high and people think they will continue to be that high. And as that leveraging pops, institutions fail. That's how it goes. And that leads us to lower ranges. So that's why, basically, it has to, in my opinion, dip below the red line. Below 10,200 or whatever. It has to go below there before it's actually found its bottom with the mess that the Fed has created. And that's, and so can that happen before New Year's? Yeah. All right, but 
I don't think you'll shake out past this absolute red line. 3,400, 3,500, that's insane. So I'm feeling I have to do some micro analysis, and I'm not willing to do that till we get closer because it isn't important for now. Um, as we get closer, this is basically where I'm going to be remeasuring and seeing if it's possible to go even lower or if this is the bottom. But right now with the economic conditions, I think we have to see a harder correction. And with Bitcoin and Ethereum linked in the markets and how they trade, I also have the same prediction on Telegram, I think. I forgot to put it out on Twitter. But here again, our red line of 472, that would be, uh, yeah, that would be uh, a little over, a little over a... Uh, 90% correction down. So I would have thought that our bottom range would have occurred between blue and red in a normal market. Again, with this unfortunate economic hurricane in the potential sites, you know, I hope it's okay. But there is potentially a lot of terminal turmoil that we could see lower volumes. And so, yes, I have this range between 120 450 like marked out this is where i think we have to come down to when the market all settles and inflation gets knocked out of the system looking at hex now it's insulated by being traded in usdc which with tornado cash action cash actions recently and the arrest of a programmer for putting out open source code it's like arresting people for creating emails because criminals use emails. Um, anyway, not going to go into politics on that. Uh, so, <laughs> Hex, it's in mostly USDC, which makes it an interesting beast. It's also been around less often. It has less holders, which means it takes less economic pressure to make it go up. So even with a recession and less spending they're still spending and this doesn't take as much spending if we're getting a huge adoption cycle which we are so I'm still somewhat bullish on hex whether it's found its bottom I'm not sure I'm confident the other ones have to go lower but why wouldn't I be sure in this well, let's look in a little closer let's look at the days and you guys should remember this if you see my earlier videos when I called this bottom in June. Now, of course, the you know, flip side of this is I'm always calling for it to go higher in a run. Up here, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going, we're going. Oh, uh, we're not. We're not going. We're dropping. We're dropping. So I was hurt. And I'm like, okay, correction, but we're still, we're still, oh, and this is where I was like, uh oh, we double tested the bottom and I didn't feel it. I'm like, uh oh down here okay you know and it just the pain started coming in we went for a really heavy correction but finally the whole market just kind of cracked bottom and i felt it i'm like there we have a tradable bottom and i called it out because i got quiet during all this waiting and i knew this had to be retested but once we slammed down here so hard and i watched 2.9 see it in the black as I move my mouse black numbers that change over there on the screen so 2.9 that is where we bounced off of that thick red line calling a tradable bottom and at that point the red lines were you know not impossible but the green lines I thought a little more likely and I called this bottom saying we would trade in this range for a while and could dip lower but that we would mostly move sideways through this range. And we have a tradable bot. Like I literally told you what was happening next. And it happened. I'm not Nostradamus. I could have been wrong. But I do my TA. I watch the bull trend. I got some friends because I didn't have the dry powder. But I let them know. Hey, go out bottom. You want to grab some? They did. And then for a change. And I started calling the top. And this means that as of literally six days ago on Monday, I called the short an apple. 
I have told you guys that I think that Apple is leading the rally in risk on, which means leading crypto by the hand because it's dragging the entire ETFs and the rest of the market with it. And when Apple crashes, everything else will. So I called the top in Apple, which means I also kept saying to Bitcoiners, oh, it's going to the moon. That's not going to age well. Remind me in this many weeks, bear traps closing, put all sorts of warnings out in Twitter that, yeah, you know what? We're having a fall. And then, oh, we had a fall. Go figure. And now we, we fell out of this trend. I think it is very likely we're going to see more sideways action between these yellow lines. So there may be some more room for bull action. We just bounced off this. I'll be waiting and watching. But as the market falls, we'll have to see if this big, bright bottom yellow line stays firm resistance. Right now, it's indicating that, yeah, we've got a pretty good, steady, normal bull run. Something that would happen when everybody is flooded out, when we finally hit the bottom. This is what it should look like in the market. So has HEX actually uncorrelated itself from Ethereum? There's still a small amount of liquidity in Ethereum, so some trading will still drag that price around. But as long as people are buying this and trading it in a volume in larger amounts than you know that little pool of Ethereum can do Hart's Law to it, it will trade and start its bull cycle now in anticipation of Pulse. And there may be, buy the rumor, sell the news, Hex may pull up regardless of the market crashing in anticipation of Pulse Chain's launch. Now, I would like to talk on that because I like to fancy myself. I'm a layman because I used to code. All right, I kind of guess what's going on, but I get excited and I speculate way too much. I don't dive into the deepest coding and I don't know Web 3.0. All right, I can barely make sense of a Solidity contract as a layman because I used to, 20 years ago, program in C++. So I am going to try and see if I can get gamma on crypto on my uh, channel next weekend maybe and i can pick his brain about the actual programming and stats so paul's chain the devs essentially have done a lot of programming in golang or golang however it's pronounced I'm not familiar with that language they've moved over how the validators run the specifics of why that was done um zero tra uh, zero cost transaction hashes allowing bro blocks to increase see gamma if you're watching this i pay attention to you man so basically on the validator system they decided uh well not sure yeah the it was designed for v2b or whatever that uh yeah the zero transactions or zero cost transactions could be done which meant that like in my terms a ping attack that's in Web 1.0 how I'd shut your butt down. I would just haul up your system, use up all your resources, and cut you off from the entire internet because you're too busy talking to me. So in the same sense, a block size is supposed to be filled by every little transaction around the network, but one bad actor could come and fill up the entire block because it doesn't cost anything to do so. And by doing that, could tax and use up the entire network and create vulnerabilities, slowing it down, making it malfunction possibly even worse the devs did not like this so they went into the golan and the golan has been progressing there are rumors coming out but beyond that i don't know much um i try and pay attention to the rumors but i love mr gamma I, as soon as he talks he dumbs it out just enough that it i'm like oh yep yeah, i'm catching 100 percent. like thank you for the english version other and he's like nobody understands me i do i do because I used to code, you know, I just need a refresher code course in order to get back into this stuff. I'm starting to get interested enough in the crypto community that, hey, uh, I might even want to code some things or script kitty some things. I won't launch my own token. I am not going to, oh, and I really respect Richard Hart. I love it. But I'm a small kind of, I, I like to believe that I'm trying to educate people that I'm getting the learners, the people that want to know how to handle themselves well on my channel. So I will warn you, like PZEN, not a scam, but the worst launched token I have ever seen. 
take a contract and clone it, an hourglass reflection contract, a tax contract. I don't like those. Drip network. So um, they didn't take that one, but like I don't like taxing tokens. It's the shell game. Follow the queen, follow the queen, follow the queen. Don't do it. You don't need to. So I don't like these tokens, but that's personal preference. Some people do. They want to get in on follow the queen. All right, that's your personal preference. I don't like it. But take the contract, copy it. I've been a script kitty. At least audit it. Oh, it has been audited. So then you tested it on testnet, Ethereum's testnet, on V3 before you launched it because that would be part of a proper audit. And it worked on testnet, but then didn't work on mainnet? No, that's not how that played out. They launched the contract after a sloppy edit just tweaking a few things and dropped it on v3 they also left the admin keys in after they got roasted by our community pulse police they then repointed the admin address to the dead address which canceled the admin keys okay good move guys way to improve they launched on v3 and then i watched conrad panic because he didn't know what to say and he told people to run away and then Oh, reflection tokens can't work on Uniswap V3. An inherent problem with them. None of them can work on it. Now, luckily, Pulse Chain, Pulse's X, the biggest X ever when it comes, was based off of V2. They're so lucky. So they were able to move their liquidity to V2. Maybe they tested their token on uh, Pulse testnet and didn't worry about Ethereum testnet. I don't know where they did their auditing, but this to me is half baked. It's like watching uh, it's like watching a man burn money in the streets and then tell you he's an accountant and you go, Oh yeah, I want you to handle my money. Like you don't I don't know why somebody who's not good at their job would inspire faith. Like um, you know, a doctor a surgeon with shaky hands. Would you really want them to operate on you? So um, a man who doesn't code, who hired devs who apparently are lazy at their coding, failed to do most, some of the most basic things and testing to make sure that these simple mistakes shouldn't have happened, does not inspire faith for me to want to continue in that. Now, the token itself, there's nothing actually scam about it. And hey, if you want to buy and gamble, that is your business. Conrad Zen is not a bad person, just, and, uh, you know, Bitcoin Maxi, Hex Maxi, you know, for, he suggested the good things as they come, and he's decided he wanted to have a token. But there are so many better opportunities in this space. Why would I waste my time gambling on something that does not inspire confidence for future growth and future development? It's been done before and better in my opinion without such a sloppy launch sorry i wish you luck in your future endeavors it's like uh what is it tvron um shout out uh you know he's had some failed projects but he stays in front of everybody he cops to it and he stays lively on youtube i respect that because i've made some mistakes with win math you know one of my paul sex videos i left it for you know embarrassment's sake when i thought that they were going to pay out in the single side of staking more Paul X because of the tweets that have come out. So I did math based on that. That's all fantasy. That math has absolutely no basis in reality because it's not how the thing works. But I didn't bother removing the video because, hey, everyone makes mistakes. I get very excited with the news and run away with things sometimes. So yeah, uh, talking about this way so much. Apparently I've had a lot to say to you guys since I haven't been around for so long. Uh, so again, um, with, uh, yeah, so it's not just PZEN out there, but, uh, be weary of WPLS or anything that tries to say that Pulse Chain or Pulse X is live. Do not go touch that. Um, yeah. And then there, yeah, there are so many weird little things that are cropping up that people are just impatient right now. They can't wait for their hex and for their pulse chain because it's being delayed because it's running perfect so they're jumping on the new shiny little train that comes by and i mean i lost a lot of hex 
followers on YouTube because I'm willing to talk about the all points. Because I believe in Power City and Liquid Loans all building infrastructure for Pulse Chain. They had decent tokenomics. They had patience as well, working on good products, not just launching something quickly and getting it out there. So there is a lot of stuff going out there that hey, I'm getting more and more leery of anything that's trying to launch right now, taking advantage of a bear market. So buyer beware. Right? I see that Hex has a smaller community and more buy pressure or less buy pressures required. So more economic ability in, a, in this asset class. Now you can see the volume returning as the bottom came in. People went, no, 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 we're getting too low. I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy. And then you see the volume returning as we go, oh, we've got too high. I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell. So you can see, keeping within my range. Funny that I could see that coming. And we bounced off this. This is really where we're going to see a lot of interesting action between this blue and bottom yellow line. Because it's going to have to decide if we're going to test lower, retest 2.9 or even lower as the market crashes, can it haul X even lower or will that buy pressure keep it up? This is an argument that I don't know for sure. Outlook, not so clear, says my crystal ball. So, yeah, I'm curious because I'm excited that something is not guaranteed to crash. That's my hopium of the day. Oh, hard time. And then even Hedron. All right, looking at this, I haven't done much chart analysis because of the dumpamentals in Hedron. It's a long man's thinking game. All right, it's like chess, not checkers. A lot of cryptos like checkers. Hedron's like chess. So I don't bore you guys with it. It's a long play. So I bought the dip right here. I had no cash to buy that dip. It sucked. I've been too broke. I would have bought that. Would have been nice. Um, and... So Hedron right now, I think, is going to see another dump down. But we've got, what's interesting right now is the launch by Cosa. So we've got another new product. And we've got a balancing effect that I don't properly understand. I haven't spent enough time. I've been, I, I had a lot of free time to travel through crypto. But then, you know, my work finally started coming in. Thank God, because I was running out of money. Um, and I haven't had the time. I really haven't. And like I said... Part of the problem for me is the fact that I'd have to calculate all the hex stakes that are out there, all the days that they are for, all the minting that's available for them, how much he drunk could rain down, then come out with a per uh, percentage for the amount of forgotten, lost, and aired. Like, oh, I ended my stake. Oh, I forgot to mint my hedron. That mistake will happen. So there'll be another element like the Drake equation. I'll have to be building this thing out in all sorts of directions to start coming out with how and when this this asset will be able to get past the dumpamentals and the problems that are coming in the market but it has had some high volume transactions so hedron could continue to do well it has some room for hope again like hex in the market i don't understand the beast well enough to exactly plan uh, prices and this does not feel like the bottom to me not like that did not like that did so yeah, I, I'm not sure where the opportunity is going to come, but maybe like that's because that was the bottom and we're not done the bull run yet. Like the tea leaves are not telling me anything specific with Hedron. That's why I don't have a chart here. I can't tell you anything. The tea leaves aren't talking to me. I can't talk to you. Sorry about that. Now, I will talk about it here. All right. It's a meme coin. It's crap. I didn't buy any. I got a free claim. I took advantage of my free claim. I did read the contract on my YouTube. It was a crappy review because I was rusty as heck. I could probably do another review, but the free claim has ended. But I have also uh, up my game. I can now fully use Etherscan. So, but I mean, I went to look at the ICOs of contract. It was four thousand lines of code. I'm not doing that review. Sorry, guys. Under a thousand lines of code, sure. I will look at something that's nine hundred, but. I was no, not happening. I do not have the time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So, yeah, Paul's D again, small community. And the other interesting thing so I claim my free claim on this, and I'm not willing to buy anymore. I'm willing to watch it and keep it and hold it. 
Paul's Bitcoin. I guess he's going to try and release another version of Bitcoin. I already like Hex as the Bitcoin, so I wouldn't buy this, but he's going to free drop it to the Paul's D holders. Okay, cool. You're using the free giveaways, and this is free money where I've been getting knocked around. Like, hey, I have a few tokens, and I watch them go from a dollar a token up to nine dollars a token and back down to three ninety five. I'm like, no matter what, I'm in the profit, so I'll just watch this. It's cool. It's cool, and it makes me feel better about the rest of my crypto. Because I'm like, oh yeah, you know, new project has room to move up, and you know, lots of media can still hit it, and the old ones, you know, they can take their hits. I can DCA, and I can hold this, and if it holds its value, when I think that bottom's going to come in, I might utilize it for that at that point. But you know, holding it, this guy, I, I've been interesting that he's willing to make fun of himself. I appreciate that in a person. I will always, always appreciate that in a person. And so I am. I have been louder and louder and louder on Twitter on this. This is because they've gotten into their alpha testing on the wallet. And that means the beta testing is around the corner. And once the beta testing drops, there's going to be another sacrifice ability because they're going to start going multi-chain. They're a Pulse Chain native wallet. But Pulse Chain has taken so long to launch, they're going to operate on multiple chains. They're going, they have lots of roadmap. It's so exciting. They have their devs working. They have the products coming. It's looking so smooth. And then in the meantime, it's a two-token system. I love the tokenomics of this. One token pays dividends, and one token gets the buybacks. The two elements of, you know, a security. Did I just say that word? Um, that basically, like, securities are bigger scams than crypto in some ways. Like, so many middlemen, so many things pump and dump. Like, I'm actually, like... I feel like I have a better chance of finding a gem in crypto than I do in, in the market. So I say those things, but um, this passes the Howie test so far. Um, but they, you know, uh, the creators, they, uh, they had a sacrifice for the freedom of time. All right. No expectation of the work of others. But I love what they're thinking and hypothesizing. Or hype, wow, hypothesizing. That's a word. Go ahead and make fun of me right there. Meme it. Um, so the hypothesis, the theories, the speculation, the game theory. Love it. They're willing to always expand and try new things because they want to find out what's going to work. So no expectations. They're always changing. But currently, the fact that one token will get bought up, so you'll see price increase. And the other token is priceless. It shouldn't even need a price. It just pays you dividends regularly for being part of the system. And then the tokens will interact because some of the dividend tokens will be used to buy up the one token. So they're a pair. And then it'll be burnt so it can't be dropped on your head. This asset that's going to be bought and burnt is not being bought. It's not being burnt. Had a major burn to reduce supply. And is here trading in liquidity at such low volumes. 18k in liquidity. It seems like a joke for the market cap of 1.6 million, right? That's a little out of proportion, but... It isn't really, you know, market cap is kind of a joke in that sense. To DCA in on an asset, the liquidity pool continues to grow. The liquidity pool is what matters, not so much the market cap. So as people DCA in, there's $18,000 liquidity. That means if $18,000 buy happened right now, after you watch this video and you're like, I got 18 grand, I just want to see this happen. If you bought it right now, you'd 4X the price. So that 87, that seven zeros and an 87 would suddenly become, we'll call it an 88 for rounding, all right? Um, that would immediately become uh, six zeros, a five, and a three, and a two. Bam! 4x the price with just 18k of volume. That's how little has to come into this. So when the wallet they make uses its swap fees to start buying this asset how long do you think it'll take them to cl to collect that much swap fees to buy into this asset how big do you think that buyer will be do you think i put it through my crystal ball perhaps i did and would this be a moment where i'm just excited enough that hey you want to have a look at the crystal ball it's been a while, hasn't it, folks? I know. Is he going to do it? Am I serious? Am I going to... Let's see. Where... 
I have so many tabs. You guys can get mad at me all you want. Uh, all right. Apparently, I don't have it open at the moment. Don't, don't, don't. All right. Documents. Don't, don't, don't. Sheets, actually. That's what I need. All right. May. Last opened. Ooh, I got to get out of this. All right. I'm in the wrong email. I'm looking at the wrong. St oh, no. I should have like an August opening where I redid this. So it won't be this video. It won't be this video. But um, yeah, because it's going to have a buy and burn because they're even starting to get some ideas of some numbers that could affect I was able to run it through my crystal ball this is why I've been so bullish on it I know what the uh, wallet buy pressure is going to do to this asset and it's so cheap so easy to scoop up at my ten dollars here and there that I can afford actually makes me feel so rich and I'm constantly bullish watching on I am crypto watching them work and watching them talk to the community and watching them thrive in this community and participate love everything that they stand for very few honest business leaders in the world and i really feel that kg is one of them maybe i've been had maybe i'm too naive and impressionable you know but i trust the guy it's part of the reason i was willing to have fun i'm like i'm gonna call you a scammer because i knew you're the complete opposite of a scammer and i rose him on it my first interview with someone funny he hasn't been back yet he's been all over the internet not on my channel um but i do love the guy maybe i need to, to give more love for him but uh he's working on really decent stuff always 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 optimistic out in the community doing his family man stuff and working hard on this project he has no social life <laughs> because he is trying to do so many great things for us while raising two wonderful kids so yeah you know butter him up a little bit come back to my channel man um so yeah i love this because there are so few holders to rain on your head yes they hold so much 904 addresses we're still not even at a thousand holders that's amazing that's amazing and yeah so i mean it could still just as easily dumped there are still holders in the system that hold giant bags of billions of this token that could just rain on you but why would they rain those billions of tokens right now in the liquidity so low like we're all just getting in like yeah when we lose a few zeros a whole bunch of us are going to ape out that's kind of how the market trades um i might you know make a little profit at that point but i love this accumulation period i love this phase because i believe because bnb as a network makes you price your main pool in bnb so from heart's law when i expect oh yeah bnb prices i expect between some really low numbers here where's the red line where's the red line oh i didn't make them red i should make them red that would help wouldn't it the red lines where do I think the actual bottom is? All right. There. In a normal condition, we would see the rebound and bottom between red and blue. But I think we're going lower. I think we're going down all the way into this range, unfortunately. But we'll see. BNB actually traded pretty hard up out of the trend while everything else is crashing like it's trying to uncorrelate. So... You know, but keeping for maximum drop, assuming that I think that BNB is going to crash to $120. All right, this bottom red line. Well, that does mean that it's almost going to be 40% of its value currently. So if I am is priced in that, yeah, a 60% dip is coming towards it. But remember, 18K is all that's required to 4X. So if we see that 60% dip, that 18K will become 7K. That's what that value will be. Or sorry, no, that's not how the math works. <laughs> no, I shouldn't be doing all this in my head. But the point is, it's thousands of dollars we're talking about difference. And I mean, you get the right community member 
even in a recession, they probably wipe their butt with a thousand dollar bidet for fun. Could they easily affect the price and buy in and want to be like, yeah, you know what? This new wallet's going to be cool. I believe in this. Yeah, there's lots of room for growth in this. So again, I'm not aping in. Just don't have to. Look at that price. Right now, $87 would get me 1 billion tokens out of the 202 billion tokens on the system. Or sorry, 80 with slippage, you want to go to $90. $90 would get you just a little over 1 billion I am tokens. That's how easy it is to become a god whale. 100 million for nine bucks. Hmm. That sounds cool. Especially when, well, how do you know that people are even going to want to buy it? Well, they're going to give it away with their wallet, which will make it aware of its existence and hopefully increase some trading and volume. And then, oh, they're going to guarantee a no expectation work of others buyer in the system forever as long as their wallet is used why should i be bullish on this i don't know so yeah market looks like crap lots of things going down i am still has room to be dragged and knocked down like all over the place but has so much room to grow it's so easy to move and really when i say so much room to get knocked down this is zero it can't, like, negative. It can't go to negative. Rug pool, the absolute definition would be zero. Like, that. that's all the room that we actually have to go down. Like, it's, it, the bottom is right there. The asset has just begun. We're aiming for, you know, I believe it can get to one cent. You know, as that just compresses into a dot line of infinity. Um, we're at the very beginning here, so I am glad I found this gem, and I'm glad I get to tell people about this gem. So, thank you for tuning in and hearing me ramble forever about the economic world position, where finances are going. I mean, you've got UK starving for oil. You've got Russia and China forking off. Like, there are things in the news that you can easily track. And I, I'm on Twitter all the time. Top Gun Hexadian at Twitter. You find me and I'm talking there because it's easy for me to send out a tweet in a couple minutes on a break at work while I'm having a smoke. Um, to do these YouTube videos, I want to go through my charts, think about my talking points, and provide an actual like half an hour to an hour of content. I don't believe in the short videos and the TikTok. That's where I'm on the Twitter. All right, there's enough going on in Telegram, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm happy there. I am very, very happy there. And I, when really there's small updates where I do have, I don't have a lot to say. Twitter is awesome. It's convenient. I can call out some price things when I see a particular asset. The tea leaves talk to me. I can do it. But there are some content videos I should be doing. Always remember, you can hit in the comments and ask me what you would like me to do for content. I know someone asked me to do a video on how to prepare in this market. And all I can constantly do is say what I'm doing to prepare. Uh, I mean, if you really want to hear it, yes, I own a bug out bag. No, I don't really talk about it because I don't really think I'll need it. But much like a condom or a gun, I'd rather have one and not need it than need one and not have it. So yeah you know um there's different levels of preparedness everyone can have uh i don't believe in like becoming a hermit because i believe that there is too much stupidity and corruption for grand conspiracies to really kick off they they try things once in a while but they're human they fail sometimes um they you know the whoever your day is for you Everyone wants to call their day someone different. I refer to uh, capitalism, the five major companies that basically own everything. That's not much of a conspiracy. It's five greedy companies. They got monopolies. They own almost everything. You got the. Dip now, I'm not going to say the names, but you know they, they own the Federal Reserve. It's not federal, or is it a reserve? It's a private bank. And it controls the world's currency, but it's owned by a company. 
So wouldn't it suggest that those companies decide whether they're going to hire and fire Jerome Powell? They can, might be able to influence since they control the company, its policy. So it may not all be as much Powell's fault as we like to blame. He's just the figurehead that comes out and talks. And he often puts his foot in his mouth, which does not do great things for the market. So this is where I love to make fun of Powell. Um, yeah, I could probably ramble about this stuff even longer and even longer. But all in all, uh, as long as you know, you've got some skills, you've got a trade, you're out there working, you're putting away money that you can, even with inflation, and then you're doing what I'm doing to prepare as best as I can. Uh, I will be doing a tutorial at 1.2 on the installation of Linux, because I think that's important, and I've been pretty lazy about it, so I am going to do a video on the installation of Linux and possibly even a tutorial on how to use Tails, just to see if that'll get me banned from YouTube. Because I'm getting a little more a little more ballsy and a little more ballsy to say things. Uh, I still, like Jamie Dimon wants to walk around the D word, I'm going to walk around the D word. I will take the lead from certain people, what not to step in, but seeing certain people start to say things a little louder and a little clearly and not get banned and shut down, so we'll see how this goes. For now, thanks for tuning in, folks, and uh, stay frosty.